Hello everyone, and welcome to Draenor Season 2, Episode 6. I am joined by my lovely cast of incredible people. You know them, you love them, or you don't know them, and this is your first time. And if that's the case, welcome to our little thing that we do bi-weekly every other week, a show every week. And welcome to our D&D &D little thing. I am your host, Ares, or Doma, on several uh, social media sites and outlets, and I will be your DM for the evening, as I have been for quite some time now. Tonight, we will be starting on the High Elven side of our civil war between the Elves of the eastern coast of the continent of Draenora, within the Ebonwood Forest. On the High Elven side, we have three of the members of of our band of adventurers, Nervek, Uvash, and Emery reside in the ringed city of Ishanadar, in the comfort of a high elven society, in their sort of advanced floating stone city in the sky consisting of twelve rings of layered cityscape. We return from last episode. Nervek, leaving on patrol after being randomly selected from the system to lead his own team, being a captain of his rank, out to the front lines to patrol for any sor uh, sort of signs of wood elven aggression or movement past the borders. Meanwhile, on the other side of the story, on our wood elven side, the system of parole or patrolling the edge of the forest on the wood elven side against the high elven borders fell upon our other two heroes Cornelius and Sterark after leaving with their squadron and moving up to the forest's edge or rather where the forest would part in the middle near the battlefield from oh so what feels like ages ago, ran into a bit of trouble when the High Elves attacked very suddenly. A small skirmish broke out, almost costing the lives of several individuals and leaving with some very unfortunate events. We now join our story once again with Nervek returning to Fort Alpha, after recently departing on patrol. Nervac, mm -hmm. he has just gone quiet. The warmth of the body still resting upon your shoulder. Just as you were about to breach the gates before a Fort Alpha, You drop down to your knees, realizing what has happened. The rest of your troop stops immediately after seeing you stop suddenly. All of them turn to you and wait. How far away from the fort? You're at its gates. Well, uh, suppose I'll just look at him, look back at the, well, now body I'm holding, and I'll, uh, take a moment to just, I'm just going to sit there kind of silent, get up, spit into the dirt. Walk towards the gates. You do so in silence. Or rather, silence against what is the natural buzzing life of the forest around you. The sounds of birds chirping in the very large trees. Perching in the lower branches or the sounds of insects buzzing as it is near summertime. You breach the gates, and you make your way back inside, body in tow. 
the rest of your troop, your squadron, follows behind you until eventually you come to the equipment room. And, as per usual, the next squadron is already inside, getting everything ready to head out. You immediately spot the captain as he's making his rounds, making sure that everybody is ready to go. The captain of the squadron after, well, being randomly selected, as you were for this day. He approaches you, not quite uh, noticing the situation. Anything to report, sir? Yeah, we, uh... <laughs> found some wood elves, as I'm assuming you can see here. As you say that, at first everybody was still just going about the attunement process, grabbing their spellbreaker shields, uh, their spellflinger bows, and their um, enchanted blades and whatnot. Uh, but they all stop and turn in your direction with a certain gravity to their gaze. was a if I recall three foot soldiers a magic user of some kind and a catman archer we he motioning to the corpse that I'm still holding just about gutted one on the field and they uh ran, touched a tree, and were gone, and that's when he took this arrow in the back, and, uh, the story writes itself. As you're pushing down the emotion in your, in your voice, um, you're gazing uh, eye to eye with this other captain. Uh, this other rank three member of the hierarchy, I guess we'll say. A moment of silence passes, and it feels very cold washing over the group in the room. And then it is gone. And it is at that moment that you realize that you're not quite sure what's supposed to happen next. Something like this hasn't happened in quite some time several months have passed and everybody stands in silence until eventually the crystals on your hand uh, usually in their sort of brightly colored array all turn a whitish pink color and give off this sort of glow. Almost as if the pigmentation of the natural crystals that were used in the creation of the attachment had always been that color. The, uh... One of the spell flingers, she comes up to you. I will deal with the departed. It would appear you are being summoned. All right. I'll um, hand over the corpse, but I'm going to hang on to the, uh, the arrow that did it. All right, so you pull it out and hold on to it. It was already pulled out. Yes, that's right. Yeah, but hanging on to that. And I'll, uh... Yeah, I'll, as, uh, I don't know, as, uh, easily as I can hand over the, uh, corpse. You do so, almost laying it over like a rug. Um, you do this sort of handoff, and she holds him aloft very gingerly. And it would appear that you are not the only one being summoned. Uh, the other spellbreaker in your party... Uh, was also being called. Immediately following protocol, 
uh, he walks up to the uh, sort of receiving area uh, from where you are pulled in after being notified that you're for patrol. And it takes about a moment or so, uh, puts down his shield, puts down his sword, and still dressed in full armor, goes and stands and offers you uh, the, s the High Elven salute, uh, which is to place two fingers just gingerly on the right shoulder and then kind of stand at attention. I'll, uh... I'll start walking over him and do the same, but sort of half-assed, sort of harshly. And then I'll stand near him. I'm, I'm just going to keep my stuff. I'm not going to bother setting it down. So you stand on the opposite side of him on one of the runic circles, and you watch as the coloration on your attachment begins to almost in sequence begin to glow and you watch as the sort of almost two spinning globes of pinkish light begin to swirl around your feet until it goes up to your waist and then up to your chest and then past your eyes and up past your head and then also watching the other man in front of you the same happening to him until you are standing in a room. Emery. Some time has passed. Earlier in the day, after heading to real food with Luvash and Nervek just before Nervek was called away for patrol, you had made your way up to the first level of the Ringed City, just as dusk was beginning to encroach upon the city. It was time for your daily lesson. You made your way up, and after making your way upon the estate, you made your way towards the common area, always awaiting to be called upon. Though this day, instead of one of the caretakers of the estate coming and receiving you, Siatrian meets you himself, dressed in a very delicate silken robe of lavender and gold, just lining the edges and the rims. It is so nice to see you again, Emery. So, today, there will be something different. I have received word that very soon there will be a meeting of sorts, a council. I would like you to attend. You are to not speak, but you are to listen. and absorb the information. Once the council is over, we will continue with our lesson as planned. It will not take long. Any objections? None. Right. Then please, and he waves his hands around the pinkish whitish uh, colored magical energy uh, leaving trails behind his fingertips and you watch as your uh, yellowish robe and uh, darkened uh, garments underneath begin to change drastically to that of one of the scholars. You are now adorned in the same reddish robes um, of the scholars from the Arcanum. Some of the bookkeepers and your appearance seems to have changed, uh, but you immediately recognize what it is without even having to make a check of some sort. Uh, it is a very simple um, illusion spell. 
Mm-hmm. And with a few curls of a beckoning fingertip, uh, he turns around his slender figure and begins to walk through the estate. I follow. Eventually he leads you to a room that you were not quite familiar with. You were very used to uh, both his private quarters as well as uh, the sort of training area that you've been taking your lessons in recently. But you walk past both of those things and instead it is you and Siatrian in a room with a long table. There is the center seat, which is um, not quite a seat, but more so a day couch. Very apparent who it is for. Two chairs on either side of that. And another off to the right of the table. And just about ten feet forward of the table, you see two runic circles. Uh, Go ahead and make an arcana check. Unnatural 20. You gaze at the runic circle and you recognize it. Uh, You've seen them placed in specific locations all over the city and used by the soldiers to get around quickly. It is one of the receiving ends of one of the teleportation areas. Uh, Though it seems to have extra rings, extra markings. You realize that there isn't quite a place for you to sit. This room seems very undisturbed. Uh, has definitely been undisturbed in the time that you have made a, your acquaintance with Siatrion. And as you gaze around, um, he drapes himself very gingerly over the day couch and then looks in your direction and then realizes the situation, moves his finger slightly in the air and conjures forth from air a sort of scribe's desk directly behind him. I'll go sit at the desk. It is adorned with many, many pieces of parchment, um, inkwells of all different colors, um, and each of the inkwells having a matching feather of different exotic species of avian creature. This sort of collection is... Very impressive, though. You're not entirely sure if it is real, so you reach out and uh, prepare to make it seem as if you were simply recording the events of the council that was about to transpire, and as you reach up to grab at one of the quills, it is physical, and you feel it. You reach for the black ink, and it has this almost raven-like feather hanging out with a quill tip. Not too long afterwards, another figure opens the door. A shorter figure, shorter than most of the high elves you've seen before. A sort of shock of whitish hair, uh, mostly white hair, that in this dimly lit room appears almost an ashen gray color. He takes his place on the far right, not on either of the chairs to the left or right of Siatrian, instead the one off on its own. After that individual walks in, another dressed in the same silverish Uh, gilded with purple um, accent armor that the soldiers wear uh, when moving throughout the city, though 
This one is much more adorned. Seemingly more adorned than even that of Nervek after seeing him post um, commendations and uh, higher placement in the ranks. And last, after that figure, a third one enters. A very slender high elven woman with very soft brown hair that drapes down to about the middle of the back. Entering in in scarlet crimson robes, very similar to your own but gilded with gold along the along the edges. Both of the figures previously mentioned take their seat to the left and to the right of Siatrian, respectively. I would like you to make a history check on the red-robed woman. Three. The robe seems familiar. It's quite similar to the one that you are supposedly wearing as of now, but you are not entirely sure uh, who this elven woman is, though she must be of great importance to be attending this council. As each of them enters, Siatrian greets them with a sort of passing glance and nod, or a sort of just recognizing and acknowledging their entrance. It is quiet. No one is speaking. The individual with the gray hair is very fidgety. Not nervous from what you can see, but just fidgeting with his fingernails. And as you examine this individual more, you realize that He seems a little bit more aged, I'll say, which is interesting for an elf. More so, not so much that his physical features are showing um, years of, well, being alive, uh, but more so just the way that this individual presents themselves, um, something about the appearance of this uh, this elf makes you feel as if he has been upon the land many years. A few minutes of silence pass until eventually, in two flashes of pinkish white color, Nervek your surroundings begin to come clearer into focus and you see four figures at a table and one at a sort of scribe's desk behind the main center figure. You immediately recognize the figure to the uh, right of the day couch. He is your high commander, Phil, yes, Phil Rithian, Phil Rithian, yes. Uh, commander of the armed forces, dressed in all of his accolades and whatnot, though the other members at the table are foreign to you. You immediately recognize Siatrian, High King of the High Elves. Instinctively, you go into a salute followed by a bow, as is protocol. Your squadron mate following suit. Mm -hmm. The woman to the left of Siatrian you are unfamiliar with, and the man to the far right of the table you are also unfamiliar with. Though, the figure in the back at the scribe's desk, I would like you to just make a quick perception check. Can do. That is a eight. 
The figure looks familiar, but the red robe uh, obscures a majority of any facial features. Okay. Ilrith Yanan stands up and essentially jolts up out of the seat in a very powerful way, leaning forward and putting a hand on the table. Give your name, your rank, and begin to tell us what you saw. <clears throat> Nervek, third rank. On patrol, my squad encountered a group, uh, wood elves, mostly, and uh, as we have been told to do, we engaged. We were doing considerably well and forced them to retreat uh, and they I'm assuming using a magic of some sort and melded with the trees and disappeared and then uh, one of my squad took a arrow poisoned arrow holding it up in the back and uh, we uh, beat feet back to the base but uh, he didn't make it Spellbreaker to your right immediately as soon as you stop talking. Kintharatanon, Illicent. Rank 1, Spellbreaker. Shieldbearer. We were selected randomly for patrol, and what my captain says is true. We have lost one of our own to a poisoned arrow, though. One thing that my captain has left out, he is not making eye contact with, mm -hmm. sort of keeping his head lower. They had some sort of spellcaster with them, who, upon seeing one of her allies drop to the ground, invoked magic seemingly past what her potential was, causing her to fall to the ground immediately after, causing chasms to open in the ground, similar to... And he stops for a moment. The last conflict between the two sides. The figure in the red robe sitting to the right of Siatrian. Her head perks up a little bit, inquisitively. Then, the High Commander speaks once again. Is there anything else to report? I want yeah. details. The, uh... The one who shot the... Our soldier, he, uh, wasn't an elf, he was a cat, cat-like, uh, humanoid, black pelt. One of them, uh, one of their soldiers, he, uh, it's gonna sound a little odd, but he, had uh, sp almost sprouted, like, uh, wings, and, uh, took flight, I don't... I mean, I've seen the flying magics that my squad mates possess, but this was different in nature. Different. I would like you to make a wisdom saving throw. Wisdom save, you say? Yes. Okay. Followed by a perception check. Wisdom save is a 13. Perception is 5. Alright. So, as you're giving this description, your head begins to feel sort of fuzzy. And then the red-robed figure to the right speaks. 
Excuse me, I do not mean to pry, but it would be within your best interest if you were completely honest and more detailed in your description, human. Then she turns to Yatrian. It would appear that the individuals that he is describing, the squadron consisted of an elf, another elf, a tabaxi, and two irregulars, two very pale-skinned humanoid creatures. Your head, Emery, perks up a little bit at the sound of that. One of, uh, one of the pale-skinned ones. Not the one who, uh, had wings. He, uh, he attempted to talk to me. I couldn't understand what he was saying, even though I, as you hear, I, I speak Elvish. I didn't understand a word that was coming out of his mouth. It sounded like rustling brush, snapping twigs, and, uh, as you're talking, Siatrion puts a hand just gingerly into the air. Don't and stop when he does that. Very slowly, yet very gracefully, lifts himself from the day couch. Carry pain with you now. Not? Sure, I carry pain. As you can see, I'm a little beat up. But the one you, uh, that you was me... lost. Yeah. Reminded me of uh, someone I used to know. And uh, he did good, too. But uh, you get me back out there, and I'm, uh, I'm bringing you back a nice black fur pelt. You can bet on that. He waves his hand just gingerly, almost with this sort of swaying motion like fingertips through water, and you watch as the air in front of him ripples like water for a moment. Very lightly delicate pinkish uh, energies just flowing and trailing off of his fingertips. You don't feel anything, though it is quite entrancing and you're not sure what he is doing. He stands up and looks directly at you, Nervek. Okay. Those that you have come to the Ebonwood with. Yeah. Those which were taken by the Wood Elves. Did they not seem as those who had fought today. I've never seen either of them fly, I can tell you that. And I, uh... Should I history check to see if I can remember? Yep, yeah, go ahead. Alright. That's an eight. As you saw in the combat, they definitely seemed like Sterarch and Cornelius, but they didn't speak common. Well, uh, they seemed like the men I used to know, but neither of them spoke any language 
that registered with me. I I hadn't known these men for long, but well, outwardly they were similar. Yes, I suppose I don't know enough about the wood elves to tell you, frankly, if, if that was them. I I don't know. Sure. <laughs> the the wings, the ones sprouted. I I don't know if this is of any matter, but they seemed holy in nature. Uh, radiant light. Uh, not like that of a torch, like holy. Siatrian gingerly sits back down upon the day couch. The red-robed figure whispers something to Siatrian. Emery, make a perception check. And while she does so, the high commander stands up and begins to walk around the edge of the table until he is face to face with you. He is slightly taller than you are. Roughly of the same physical build. He looks both of you up and down. You and your ally. And Theratanan. He puts his arm up in salute and instinctively you do so backwards and as you do so he grabs your arm that you salute with always the one that the attachment is placed upon and as he does so you watch as he grabs you by the wrist and he looks you dead in the eyes Captain Nervik, correct? Correct. You are promoted to rank four for your excellent leadership in the field. And then he turns the spellbreaker. You are promoted to rank three. You are a captain. I will expect you to act accordingly in the future. And then he grabs the wrist of the other member as well, and you look down, and you can see that after he let go of you, your attachment is now gilded with a golden color. Hmm. And as he begins to walk back to his seat, he speaks with his back to you. You are dismissed. And he waves his arm, and you watch as the red-robed figure uh, does something with her hands, and then <laughs> both of you disappear from the room and land back inside the barracks. Meanwhile, in the council room. I rolled a form on my perception check. All right. You try and make out what the red robed figure was whispering to Siatrian, but you can't quite hear it or see the lips well enough. A moment passes, and then the high commander turns to the gray haired figure has not spoken yet. Molfarad. And he turns and says, Oh, yes? You heard of what they described. Some sort of magic that allows them to push themselves past their physical and mental capabilities. I believe that our gear must be improved to be adequate in dealing 
with this newfound threat. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Um, I'll definitely get the, 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 the sun, and I will be working very hard to improve the designs that we have already put forward to you. Very well, you are dismissed. And... Um, this figure, who has now been revealed to be Mol Farad, um, makes his way out and make a history check when you hear his voice. Seven. Ah, uh, you are not rolling right now. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the voice seems so achingly familiar, but you can't place it. It is now the three of them and you in the room, and they begin to talk amongst one another. While this whole conversation, this whole council has been taking place in Elvish, you've understood every word of what's been going on for some unknown reason. The three figures begin to talk amongst themselves. And it's mostly just formalities. And then the real discussion begins. A majority of it is taking place between uh, the High Commander and the Red Road figure. Seatrian mostly just speaking in short phrases ever so delicately as he does, and as the two are speaking, he just outright speaks. Friends. And they both stop talking immediately. This sign of aggression will lead to more conflict. I want the trolls doubled, more information gathered, and each patrol squadron will be accompanied by one of our scholars. I trust this will not be an issue. Liakish, turning over to the red-robed figure. No, of course not. Right. Now. We will wait for Molfarad to produce what he can. In the meantime, see to it that Nervek is well accommodated for his loss. And at that, the High Commander kind of looks at Siatrian rather strangely, but only for a passing moment. Not long enough that it would have some sort of effect on the sway of the conversation, but long enough that you're able to notice it. And with a simple nod, everyone is silent. And then Siatrian speaks once again. You are both dismissed. And they both rise and leave. And then he stands and turns his back to you. Councils of war are always interesting, don't you agree? Indeed. Come, we have matters to discuss and 
well. I believe in this new light. There will be use for you beyond what I had originally anticipated. And he gets up and begins to gingerly, ever so delicately, yet so elegantly, begin to make his way out of the room. You follow in suit, and both of you make your way over to his quarters. Not quite the uh, training area like you were expecting. As soon as you make your way in through the door, uh, he holds an arm out aloft um, and very lazily brings an arm up towards the wall with the fireplace, and it opens directly um, in the middle, almost rippling uh, at that space in the room. And as he does so, uh, it begins to almost shimmer and fade like waves of heat in the desert. And beyond that, you see a smaller room uh, similar to the room in which his portion of the blade is kept in. He drapes himself upon the day couch and turns to face you. So... The descriptions of those that were within the squadron. Did they sound like your missing companions? Without a doubt. I see. Then, how about we do something about that, yes? What do you have in mind? Well, there are multiple methods of magical application that we could put to use, we could communicate with. Though, there is something that is quite bothersome. If they did truly speak the language of the land, like that of which Nervek had described, then... They no longer possess the ability to speak common. Or any other language for that matter. And that would mean that they had performed the ritual of the world tree. And bound themselves to it. It definitely... Complicates things. And that is the information that I will give for free. And now I must ask you a question in our pleasant little game that we always play. What do you plan to do now? Whatever I must. In terms of... In terms of... What is best? Say that. Now then. It is your chance to try some information should you desire. And as you stand there, sort of, just still trying to take in everything that was talked about and said, um, it's definitely a lot to take in. 
And as you sort of gaze around the room, uh, you gaze towards the extended portion, or what seems to be an extended portion, you're not quite sure if it is quite real or not, and you see all manners of equipment within. Um, mostly decorative pieces, uh, many robes and such, um, highly adorned silver plated armor with golden and purplish meta metallic uh, sort of gilding to it. And at the far end of the room upon the wall, uh, several different uh, blades upon display, most prominently the one in the center of the most importance. And then you turn to him and speak your question. Who is Mulferad? Well, Mulferad is the master of enchanted magics, and he and his son have been creating a majority of the implements with which we conduct ourselves. In these months that have come to pass, you have gathered more mastery over the arcane. Would you agree? I do. Now, as I said before, I may have more use of you than first anticipated when you at first come to me and caught my interest oh so that time ago I had once anticipated during the next direct conflict between the two sides to put you within our scryers waters but now it would seem that we have an opportunity at a more direct approach in allowing you to accomplish that which you desire Though, I must warn you, it is dangerous. War is war, after all. Now, if I had the ability to bring forth magical prowess with which you are ever so slightly out of reach of. Or would you be willing to attain it? Almost that implying doesn't... what you would give. That depends on the cost of it. What do you want for it? There are drawbacks to this sort of method with which to pull from the weave and could result in immense physical harm to yourself. Only mortals of very significant arcane prowess are able to do so without bringing harm upon oneself, but pulling so much raw power from the weave takes a toll upon one's physical form. Are you willing to risk this? I am. Then, please, step forward. I 
I do so? And he stands up and extends an arm out and you look in the direction that his arm is extended towards and you watch the blade in the center of the wall in the extended part of the room sort of fly very rapidly and then land softly in his hand. I just, I just realized that I haven't described this, what this blade looks like at all. Um, it is a silver blade that almost twists into one half of a helix. And running along the side of it is several uh, adorned uh, gemstones of uh, different cuts and different types. And each of them almost softly emanating this light. And as it moves, the air around it and the space around it almost seems to be rippling like water. And as he brings it over... He places it, the tip of the sword, directly upon your chest, and you feel it make contact with your mark of the silver. And you feel this foreign force begin to course through your body. I would like you to make a constitution saving throw. With advantage. Because of your mark of the silver. Unnatural 22. The 22? Mm-hmm. You begin to feel this arcane ability flowing through your body almost in certain places feeling as if it's going to burst almost at the joints of your arms and your legs you can see almost pockets for, of bubble forming underneath your skin uh, and your veins begin to change just ever so delicately colors underneath your surface of your skin and you begin to watch almost as if a translucent version of you yourself begins to rise almost being pulled apart from your body and then being pulled into multiple directions make a wisdom save with advantage unnatural 20 unnatural Barely enough, the check was 20. You watch this sight, and it is striking. It is bizarre, and it takes you aback for a moment, but after some time passes, you feel a burst, almost as if this tension uh, is being released, and then... Almost in the back of your head, you f hear the sound of what sounds like hundreds of glass windows being shattered all at once in this cacophonous sort of just high-pitched crashing noise, and you he hear them scatter and slam into some sort of imaginary ground and bursting forward even further, and then light begins to just pour out of every orifice in your body and then everything goes white and then you're standing as your vision begins to clear you're standing in a room and you see the backs of two individuals a slightly taller man with bronze skin and golden hair flowing down to the shoulders a woman slightly shorter with blackish hair, fair skinned. And then that image passes, followed by another one. 
Everything around you from the corners of your eyes begins to fade to darkness, and then all you see is the two glaring red eyes of a creature. And then a mouth with jagged teeth and flame beginning to lick along the sides, slightly illuminating the red scales and the snout of this dragon. Its head easily the size of your body three times over. Massive. And then something inside you fills you with a sense of dread, and then that passes, almost being blown away by the wind. And the last image you see is the face of Mialdrio Renith. Or Pops. He looks directly at you, and then smiles softly, and then turns takes the form of the silver dragon and then flies away and as he flies his body begins to turn to sand cascading down to the ground and then all of these visions pass i would like you to add over channel the level 10 wizard ability to your character sheet the visions pass and you are once again in the private quarters of Siathrian, and he looks directly at you, and you watch as the magic is just dancing at your fingertips, where there was a soft glow from your ancestry before. It is almost slightly brighter, and you feel invigorated. You watch as Siatrian looses the blade from your chest and from his hand, and watch as it gently begins to move back to its position before. Now then. How do you feel? Do you feel different? Incredible. Describe the feeling to me. I don't know if that's possible. I have made you into Almost a funnel for the weave. You can call forth magic at its maximum potential. Though, as I have said before, you must be cautious as it can deal great harm to your body. You are still young. A moment passes, silence washing over the room. And... You expect him to sit once again upon a couch, but instead he gestures over towards the door. Before we continue with plans scheduled, I believe it is your turn. Please choose wisely as to what you wish to ask. And you begin to mull it over in your head, 
trying to decide which of the many, many questions is the most important in this exact moment. Is there a limit to my power? There is a limit to every mortal's power. That is why we are mortal. Those which find limits and go beyond are those that become gods. And then he begins to make his way towards the door. Moving our eyes over to Luvash. You finish your meal at real food. And ex- it just an exquisite blending of meats and flavors. Just mm, so incredibly delicious. What's the plan now? Dusk is just beginning to wash over the ringed city. Huh. I, I don't actually know if I have living quarters or anything like that if I want to go to sleep. Well, you know about the barracks uh, after talking with Nervek about it. Um, so you could probably inquire about that sort of thing there, or you could maybe speak to some of the locals. You are still within uh, the establishment Real Food. There are a few patrons around and the full kitchen staff. Um, how many people are in here, roughly? Um, since the time that you've been eating, it's uh, escalated to about six people, all of them at the uh, service window on the sort of bar stools. Do all of these people look like commoners, either commoners or like people who practice magic for a living? Go ahead and make a perception check. Yes. That is a 25. Five of them do seem to be the high elven equivalent of common folk, um, mostly dressed in sort of drabber colors, and um, while the clothing is completely spotless and um, void of dirt or disrepair, um, you can still see the sort of um, lack of wealth, I suppose we'll say. Um, though at the very end of the bar, you do see a figure in soldier's armor. Can I tell from like the gems on his arm or whatever they are, what rank he is? Uh, you are not familiar with uh, the differences in rank. The only um, the only difference that you've seen so far is that you're new, so you're probably at the first rank, and you know that uh, when you had last seen Nervek, he was rank three, and his did look a little bit different than yours did. Um, but... Um, this individual is sort of farther off to see, so I'd need you to make an investigation check to sort of try and get a good glance at his uh, attachment. Of course. That is a natural one. He's keeping it rather obscured. Um, and just the people moving in front of him since he's on the opposite side of the bar of you, it's kind of hard to get a good look. Is there an empty space on either side of him? Yeah, there's an empty space to his right. He's on the left side of the room. Well, I'm, I'm gonna go and sit down next to him then. I'll, I'll grab a drink. Uh, you still have your bottle of Spellweaver's wine? Oh, I still have that. Fantastic. 
Yeah. Oh, but yeah, it's very, very strong, isn't it? It's extremely strong. <laughs> oh, and um, I need to remind you that you are very drunk, actually, now that I recall. Oh, I am. All <laughs> yes. right. Make, make a... Make a dexterity check to drunkenly stumble over. All right. Uh, oh, that is a 20. Unnatural 20. You make your way over. Uh, you stumble a bit, but cap catch yourself on the uh, column and sort of push yourself off of it and do a little spin to play it off. Um, and then make your way over and plop down with a heavy thud um, on the bar stool next to the soldier. So as I'm, as I'm actually carrying the, the wine with me in my hand, I'm going to put it down on the table. Have you tried this thing? It's much more powerful than I thought it would be. Spellweaver's wine. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's called, yeah. Yeah, I've had it a little bit. Say, I haven't seen you around here before. Oh, um, I'm quite new. He looks down at your hand, and at this distance you look down at his attachment uh, at the same time, and they seem almost identical. Pleased to meet you. I am Luvash, and I'm gonna extend my hand. Extends a gauntleted hand forward. Spike. Well, it's what they call me. That is a very odd name to call someone, but it's your name, and you should be proud of it. Anyway, here, please do take a sip. Oh, I don't well. think I can have any more. I don't plan on having any than the drink I just came for. The usual! And, uh, the kitchen staff, uh, one of the members looks over in his direction and recognizes him and then begins to get to work. And then he holds a hand up and the gems on the attachment glow in a pattern and stop. Oh, come on. Do you seriously not want to drink with me? You should be celebrating. We're gonna win the war soon. Sort of looks over at you. This, he has a sort of sullen look on his face. Um, shortish uh, brown hair. Kind of a bit of a larger build. Um, it's almost a little bit off-putting to see a muscular elf, but uh, from the just wideness of the uh, armor and just looking at it, looks really heavy. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, he looks, he looks over at you with that same sullen look as before. Uh, I'd rather not. It's not in my payroll to be able to afford something like that. Well, I'm not asking you to pay me. I am offering you a drink. And... Come on, let's celebrate. Today's my first day, actually. So really, I am I am celebrating being here. Don't you want to celebrate with me? And I'm gonna give him the biggest and fakest smile that I can possibly muster right now. Make a persuasion check with disadvantage. <laughs> oh boy. Actually, no. With advantage, you're drunk. You're more friendly. Hell yeah. That is a twelve. He looks you over. I still have to politely decline, but I saw you come in with Captain Nervek. You know him? 
Very well. I'm gonna take my wine and put it aside. Uh, well, saying that I know him is a bit of an overstatement. I've spent a short amount of time with him. So, let's say I know of him, but I don't really know him. In fact, the more I speak to him, the less I like him. <laughs> well, I just figured, cuz... Neither of you are elves. Same yeah. with that other bronze-skinned fellow that came in. Now see, that's Emery. I am much more fond of him. But, um... Yeah, I'm... I'm not particularly fond of anyone in here, if I'm, to, if I'm completely honest. But oh well. I do have a question. Actually, I have two questions, if you don't mind. Sorry, I'm a bit scatterbrained. Uh, first of all, if I wanted to sleep somewhere, where would I go? Well, you're a soldier, so you could just head up to the barracks and then take either of the staircases on the left or right at the far end of the room and just go down the hall to the very far end of it and you'll get to your room. Okay, thank you. And <clears throat> one more question. How often do people of... And I'm gonna just sort of wave my my arm with my rank in front of them. People of our rank, how often do we go out on patrol? Well, patrol is randomly selected. None of us quite know how it happens or who decides if anyone does. Uh, but you'll get a little fascination of colors, usually green, blue, blue, green, red, and that'll mean that you're on patrol, and it'll be a couple minutes, and then you'll just be whisked away over to one of the forts. Hmm. Okay, thank you. That's actually very helpful. Well, I'll... I think I'll let you go back to your meal, and I will probably retire for the moment. It, w it was nice meeting you, though. And once again, give him the big fake smile. Before you go, about three months back, was the first time I met Nervek, back when he had just joined as a soldier, and that same fella... Emery, I think you called him, was in here too. You knew of him. Were you with him before all this happened? And as I was starting to stand up, I'm gonna sit back down at him again. My friend, it's a very long story. And, uh, and I'm going to look around a bit. I'm sure that if I told it in a very public setting, not many people would be happy with me. Well, suit yourself. I'll see you around then, Uvash. Wait, did I tell him my name? You didn't. Oh yeah, I did, I did. You... <laughs> Alex is almost as, <laughs> as drunk as Luvash is. <laughs> no, I, I don't believe you did. No, no, I did. Oh yes, I you did. Yeah, you did. Well, see you around, Spike. And then I'm... <laughs> I'm just gonna try to, like, tap my, like, my arm and see if I can, like, activate the teleport. But so, I'm just basically slamming my yeah, hand against you're, it. You just begin to try you tap with one of your one of your claws, just tick 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 tick. Like just the sound of hitting the, the little um crystal. Now let's see if I can do it. No, I can't. Apologies. That was probably really loud. Um I don't hold on. 
yeah, so, sort like yeah, sort of like that. Nice. Um, <laughs> and um, it's you're just fumbling with it and make a history check with disadvantage. <laughs> Oh boy. Double natural 20, come on. Eh, 15. 15? Well, after you fiddle with it for a moment, uh, you kind of hold it up and look at it, and then you put it at arm's length, and when you put it at arm's length, oh, there it goes. Um, and then the projection, I guess I'll finally call it, I've been waiting that the whole time, um, appears uh, off the top of your hand with the several glowing dots on the different levels. And... I know where I should go to go back to the, like, barracks? Yes, it is one of the right. orbiting uh, islands. Oh, of... yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna tap it. Alright, so... You hold your, your hand up to it, and just as you're about to tap it, you immediately remember the feeling that you're still not quite used to of being teleported and the fact that you're drunk and already not feeling too great you're like oh no tap <laughs> and it's gonna be done sometime make a constitution saving throw <laughs> hell yeah natural one. Oh, 14 14? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You you managed to to keep it down. Um and there's a a very loud gulp as I swallow it the hell. <sighs> and as you land um after going through the cascading wash of just colors flying past you uh, in the sequence uh you find yourself in the uh, barracks, the large, open, uh, very homely um, living space, and it's actually about that time, um, as you can see out some of the windows, that the twilight has just passed, and it is now beginning to creep onto dusk, as uh, actually that perfectly lines up with when uh, Nervek would be returning to the barracks as well. So shortly after you lend and you uh, begin to stumble your way through, uh, you hear the sounds of uh, a couple other people uh, landing at one of the four runic circles, and you turn back and it's Nervek. He's not looking too great. Hello, Nervek. Drink. And I'm gonna basically show him my bottle of wine well if you don't mind then I'll uh... careful it's strong thanks I'll just take a swig and hand it back alright make a constitution save immediately okay. boy we about to be fucked up Oh, 15. that was almost a natural one. <laughs> That's oh, a 15. 15? Hmm. Yeah, that's that's still not enough for the Spellweavers, man. This, this shit is strong. Um, so it immediately, as soon as you take a swig and you, um, it's, you hold it in your mouth for a moment, it tastes almost like what you imagine the soot after a fireball tastes like. And then immediately you swallow it, and a heat begins to feel fill your mouth, and then it is immediately contrasted by a wave of cold, and then it feels like your tongue is melting, and then burning, and then cold again, and then it feels like the inside of your mouth exploded. And then a sort of pinkish mist escapes from your lips afterwards, and you are immediately drunk. <laughs> well, I, uh, I thank you. you for the drink, and I, uh, I think it'd be best if 
I and you are immediately cut off by um, the sound of <laughs> Intharatanan, the spellbreaker, who just got uh, promoted to captain. Call out. Hey guys! Guess what? And he holds up his arm with the attachment. And then everybody goes, Whoa! And then he goes over. It's like a bunch of frat guys. It's really funny to watch. Um, and there's people playing light ball. And then um, drinks are brought up in celebration from uh, some place below. Um, and it's actually a small little bit of a celebration scene going on right now for the new captain. Well, uh, Nervak again is gonna thank Lubash for the drink, and, uh, I should, I should be retiring for the night. I thank you. I thank no. you, Lubash. hold on. Did, uh... Did anything interesting happen on patrol? Yeah. Uh, let's not... Let's not talk about it here. Or now. <laughs> but All right. There's some stuff you should know. <clears throat> but I should... I should be going for the night. And anyway. it's actually at that moment that you realize... Um, after sort of engaging in conversation and being at this close of a distance with Norvac, several open wounds and cuts in his armor just decorated along his body. Hmm. Um, excuse me for just one second, because I forgot to do something with my character sheet, and now it is incomplete. Uh, Um, I'm just gonna look at him and just let him walk away. Okay, and then I'll uh, head back up the stairs to my quarters. Um, so people are eating and drinking right now, right? Like, sort of around me? Yeah. Or close to me, okay. I'm just gonna grab a piece of meat, and then just have my bottle of wine with me, and then just go somewhere and sleep. Alright. Um, you take a piece of meat from what appears to be a roasted bull, um, and you begin to follow the instructions that, uh, Spike gave you, um, and you begin to make your way up one of the, uh, bookshelves, the bookshelf, the staircases, yeah. um, and... You bring the piece of meat up to your mouth and you take a bite of it and it is bland and flavorless. Mm. I'm just gonna look is there anyone around me? No. I'm just gonna drop it. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> so you drop it on the staircase and um, the staircase actually takes a full 90 degree turn and then goes up again um, and as you make your way up um, also, comes, sorry yeah. to interrupt you since no one's around me I'm just going to put the bottle of wine in my mouth and then just go on all fours and then start going up the stairs that way <laughs> <laughs> okay. hey ma'am, I'm a cat that's fine okay, so you make your way up to the top of the stairs And it's a long hallway, just like described before, with a door at the end of it. Alright, I get up and I open the door. And it's a very small-looking living space inside. Um, a small table and nightstand next to a, a very cot-like bed with an empty bookshelf and a window. I'll... If it's not open, I'll open a window. And then I'll go to bed. Alright, you open the window, and you retire for the night. Nervek, you make your way up to your uh, quarters as well, opening the door, and your accommodations, since you became captain, have been 
much, much better. Um, and now that you've been, well, promoted once again, they've gotten even better. It is a very, very large room um, with a large, well, just living space before you, very, very well decorated. Awesome. And you also retire for the evening. So, those who need it. Um, actually, before we take that long rest, let's have Ush and Nervek make one more constitution saving throw. Oh boy. This, is not, this does not bode well for us. No. <laughs> 20. Oh, thank god. Seven. And first time you've had Spellweaver's Wine, it didn't go well. You vom onto the side off of your bed, and you're too drunk and tired to do anything about it. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Um... So, now you can mark off a long rest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Perfect. takes 36 points. <laughs> <laughs> hey, like, if you're going to bed right after, it's fine. Like, you just hear the sound of, like, 30 dice hitting the <laughs> table. <laughs> and he poisoned you. Okay, moving on. Um, so, yeah, you can go ahead and mark off a long rest um everybody has gotten the thing that uh they were supposed to get correct um the next day comes about what does everybody plan to do well uh first things first i'm gonna see the mess i made it's actually uh, not there anymore i'm gonna be very happy <laughs> um I'll suit up and uh get ready to go about my day. Or actually no. I'm going to um go ahead and try and study a certain object which I have found. Think in our con. Okay. Four. Good lord, mate. You Super open rolls. you open it and nothing about it makes sense at all. Mm -hmm. Make a wisdom save. Hell yes. Twelve. Twelve, you said? Yes. Alright. Um, you feel almost as if maybe it's the feeling of the hangover, but the back of your head almost seems like it's uh, burning, almost. Mm -hmm. And then it passes. Okay. You weren't able to gleam anything off of the Hey, okay. I personally, um, well, I went out and I'm looking for Norvac. So if I can't find him directly, I'm just going to go downstairs, see if I can find any bland tasting foods. As you make your way downstairs rather early in the morning after reti retiring to an early evening, the boat. Um, you find a lot, about 25 or so, um, soldiers that aren't dressed in, in a relaxation, um, just passed out, either drunk or, um, just out of exhaustion, scattered around the main floor. Now... Are they carrying anything? Um, 
Yeah, there's uh, a few bottles that clutched in the hands. Um, Go ahead and make a perception check. That's a 15. Uh, yeah, mostly holding bottles. Um, a couple of them um, clutching some sort of parchment that you're unfamiliar with. Uh, almost like purple stained parchment. Ooh, can I try to take it? Uh, go ahead and make a sleight of hand. With advantage because they're asleep? Eh. You're, you're hungover. Ah, uh, fair enough. Natural 20. <laughs> and with one swift motion, you swipe it away. What does it say? It doesn't say anything. It's a tiny piece of purple cloth. Oh. I'll put it in my pocket. Alright. You pocket a purple cloth. <laughs> Oh, let me just add that to my inventory. It's like handkerchief size. Purple cloth, very important to story. <laughs> yes, of course. Very well. Um, is there any left of a food? Uh, no. Oh fuck. But um, you begin to think about food, and you begin to look around. And your attachment starts to um, glow in random patterns. Ooh. And you feel something sort of surging at your fingertips. Almost familiar to when you draw back your arrows and put magic into them. You feel a similar sort of magic... Um, it's a different feeling, though, coming up to almost your wrist and then coalescing in your palm. And then I have food in my hand. And you're not quite sure what to do next. Go ahead and make an arcana check. Ooh, I'm not good at those. <laughs> Actually, I am. 21. 21? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um... You're not quite sure how, but after seeing this both on the road in your travels or very briefly the night before, you watched the methods with which they were conjuring food, and you sort of, just based off of memory, uh, begin to use the same hand motions with the hand that you feel this almost invisible sphere on your hand. And as you do so, almost like a thin stream of uh, spooled thread being pulled from the spool, it begins to leave your hand in small amounts, and then you watch as a small meal begins to apparate on one of the tables next to you. Ooh. You just casted, create food and water. Hmm. Which is very strange, because... You don't know how. I don't know any magic. You don't. The only magic that you know is, well, your art, your yeah. archery stuff. It's barely magic. That uh, that too. Um. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, all right. I'm just gonna eat poop, and I'm imagining that it's a beautiful omelet. It looks incredible. It tastes disgusting, though. It I tastes really like nothing. <laughs> it hey, is man, like, bland I'm and used flavorless. To tofu. It's fine. Yep, bland and flavorless, but it has the texture. <clears throat> yeah, that's nice. It's and, nice and uh, light and fluffy and delicious. If it had flavor, texture is nice. <laughs> just like Luvash. Um. I guess I'll just wait around and see what happens. I mean, I know that Nervak went to bed roughly at the same time as I did. And I assume he would be down here. So I'm just going to wait for him. About a half hour passes, but then eventually, Nervak, you do make your way down. Um, 
after studying the item in question. <clears throat> Okay. So you make your way down and watch Luvash sitting at the table, uh, the many, many drunken, uh, slumbering bodies of some of your um, fellow soldiers. Not an uncommon sight. <laughs> Good morning. Morning. So, about uh, whatever happened yesterday. Yeah, uh, I think it would be best if, uh, if we could track down our third. If we could, if we could figure out where Emery is, I'd like to get him in on this as well. But uh, we can walk. If you're done, yeah. that is. Earring. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> My pager. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll say, uh, are you done with that? Oh, yeah. All right, let's, uh, let's get a move on. And I will exit the, or I'll exit the barracks. All right, where are you going to land? Or are you just walking outside the door? Uh, just walking outside the door. All right, so you gaze off onto the island. And then I'll, um, how many, is there, are there a lot of people in the streets? Is it busy? Is it sparse? Well, from the orbiting island that you're on, uh, which level are you looking at? Mm, help me out again. Is third, like third from the top or third from the bottom? Uh, third from the top. Then, let's say fifth. Um, it's early in the morning. Uh, some people are mostly just getting to their storefronts and shop very slow. Okay, that will work. I'll just uh, go to the fifth level using the attachment. All right. Um, is there a bench or something I can sit on within my view? Yeah, easily enough. Okay, I'll uh, do that. <laughs> I'll walk over and uh, sit on something, and I'll uh, use the earring and uh, just say, You there? Emery, you are awoken by the sound of Nervek creeping into your ear. Hello? If you're able, we should talk. Let's talk away? In person. Mm, where are you? Fifth level, but I can move. Meet me at the Arcanum. Works for me. And I'll relay that. Well, I'm sure Luvash could have heard the parts that I was saying, but I'll relay the last, relay the rest of it to him and uh, shoot on over there. I will head that way as well. Okay. Um, for the first teleport, um, I would like both of you to make con saves. Last con save I'll make you. Make. <laughs> <laughs> Three sessions later, can't say. <laughs> hey, spell four. weavers four, four, and yep. you blow chunks off the bench, and then you get up and you teleport away before anybody saw that it was you. Before I leave, I'm gonna go ahead and I uh, use presidigitation to clean up the mess. <laughs> okay, <laughs> you evaporate it, and then it smells awful. And then I'll get out of there. <laughs> It just smells like a really, really, really bad passing of wind. Okay. <laughs> and then the both of you go up to the second level and out over to the Arcanum. Sounds good. You wait there for about an hour or so as it takes Emery much longer to get around than you, uh, you two. Um, and eventually, Emery makes his way, and you watch him walking uh, down the stone streets over towards the Arcanum. To 
took your sweet time, didn't you? Well, unlike you, I can't teleport around everywhere. <laughs> aren't, aren't you a wizard? Yes. Well, not quite, but I don't have a uh, fancy little bracelet like you do. <laughs> well, that sucks for you. Anyway, um, Narvak, where do you think we should go? Well, uh, Emery, do you happen to know any place where we can discuss, uh, things away from prying ears and eyes? No. No? <laughs> well, Alright then. I guess we'll just, uh, look around for any place that, uh, couple dudes could just gather at inconspicuously. All right, so in the alley between the building and the Arcanum, <laughs> because it is the closest. That'll work. <laughs> um, I would like everybody to make stealth checks for entering oh. the alley. Ooh, I'm very good at those. Watch me roll a natural one. Oh, it would be so wonderful. 25. Okay. 18. 18. Oh, that's jokes. 8. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, dully noted. Oh, whoops, that fell off my desk. All right. So, uh, you seem to slip into the alleyway unnoticed to your knowledge. Okay. So, when I uh, last saw you two, I got called in for patrol, yeah? Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I uh let a group on patrol like I normally do and then I uh saw a group of uh what I had thought were uh wood elves and so I commanded my squad to attack and we did and I uh I bore down pretty hard on the first one I saw with the, uh, you know, my, my mace and, um, he fell flat on his back and, uh, got a good look at him and he got a good look at me and, well, he, uh, he looked a hell of a lot like Sterark. He, uh, attempted to, I, I think he attempted to talk to me, but I, I don't know what the hell he was saying. It was like wind through leaves and fallen rocks. <laughs> Have I heard anything about that? Does that sound familiar in any way? Just for shits and giggles, make a history check. Watch me roll a natural 20. 15. 15? Yeah. It could be multiple things. It could be, uh, from the sounds of the falling rocks part, it sounds like it could be primordial, but you're not sure. Uh, oh, no, I'm so upset. Hold on. All right, everybody, hold on. We're holding on. Grab something. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's because before my character sheet got unfortunately deleted... I had I could speak five languages, and I have common, elvish, under common, and abyssal, and I know I had another one, but I can't remember what it was. And if it's, I don't think it was primordial. No, it was probably another common language. I think I'm. Yeah. Yeah, that definitely wasn't primordial. And so, um, uh, you guys know me. I. uh... I didn't know what the hell I was looking at, so I, uh, I just kept hitting shit, and, uh, it was going pretty well in our favor. I'm One sorry, of my... y you attacked Sterak? I don't know if it was Sterak. I don't know what the hell it was. Hm. He hit back, I can tell you that. I'm gonna point at like a gash in my armor, one of the ones that he dealt me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, uh, it looks 
uh, at least from your recollection, uh, Emery, after spending so much time with Sterark and watching him in combat and seeing the types of gashes that he can leave with a rapier, it looks almost identical. It's uncanny. And uh, one of my men, uh, he uh, just about gutted one of them, not... Not the one that looked like Sterark, and, uh... Woman that was with him, uh, cried out and... Used some... Magic, some of the m most powerful stuff I've seen, and, uh... I think I tossed on its head for a minute, like, a uh, Damn near like an earthquake. And then, uh... One of them... Sprouted wings. <laughs> Blinding white. And, uh... Got a good look at him, and, well, you're not going to be surprised, but he looked a hell of a lot like Cornelius. <laughs> and then, uh, they got out of there, and my man, uh, Wunu, did one of theirs and pretty good, got shot in the back with a poisoned arrow, and he, uh, I didn't get him back in time. And, uh, and the higher-ups called me and I gave him about the same account I just gave you, but I just, I don't know, I never knew either of them for too long, but sure as hell didn't think Cornelius could fly. Hmm. Well, Cornelius was always talking about how he had some sort of connection with another creature. So, that might have been it. Maybe. Maybe. Unfortunately, I'm not too familiar with him in general. I'm, <sighs> I'm quite certain the people you fought were Cornelius and Starark. <laughs> At least they're still alive. Yeah, well, that is something. Also, I, uh, I, I don't know how much it relates to the two of you, but I was, uh, trying to, uh, call in, uh, some help from down below, so to speak, um, using magic, and it, uh, fizzled. I never had <laughs> issues with magic just not working in this way except for with the uh spellbreaker shields but this is different nothing there just filled out the forests um i believe they limit certain types of spells figures well if those were them too, then I suppose it's good. <laughs> Otherwise, they'd uh, probably would have been dead. That might be better. I don't know what it's like over there. Just because it looks like them doesn't mean they're who we used to know. Of course. Norvak, you're a captain, right? Well, I was, I'm something higher than that now, I'm fourth rank, I don't know what word for that is, but was a captain, then, yeah. Then, well, you're even higher now, which is good. Say, if you were to ask someone who is a higher rank than you a favor, do you think you'd be able to be successful? I don't know, really. Depends on the favor. Those, uh... The... Uh, highest up they've got. He was at the meeting yesterday. I, uh... Don't think he's the kind of man to give out favors. But, uh, well, someone lower than him, perhaps. Well, even someone lower than him, I'm sure, would be fine. Because I feel like it would be very beneficial if... Um, 
I feel like it would be very beneficial if you ask someone if you and I could perhaps go on uh, a patrol together. Perhaps at the, uh, the brief meeting there, I'd... I didn't look too happy, I can tell you that. They, uh, my promotion and all. Might be able to have some say in picking my squad, I don't know. There you go. Maybe. You, you said that one of the people who were with you died, didn't he? Mm-hmm. There you go. You could say that you trust me as a fighter. And you know that if I were to come with you, nothing bad would happen. I'm sure that I might be able to convince someone. Maybe. Something to think about. I'm... I'm sure I have, like, some sort of parchment or piece of paper with me. And... A way to write on it? Right? I have a forgery kit, so... Does that have, like, pen and paper? Or, like, ink and quill and paper? I think so. Alright. I need to write down a note. Um, I, I don't know if I... Because, like, I don't want to tell it to Nervak and uh, Emery. So should I just tell you, Ares? Or should I just say it publicly anyway? No, no, you can, you can tell me. We'll keep it a, a secret from everybody. Yeah. I'm gonna DM it to you. Alright. Is there anything else you three would like to accomplish? What's your take on all this, Emery? War is coming. Tread carefully. My friend, I lived here for almost all my life. War has always been here. But I do appreciate the concern. Well, Alright then. Very well. be hitting the trail. I appreciate you two coming and uh, keep your noses out of trouble. I'm gonna giggle. <laughs> um, is there anything to do around here? I mean... Well, for now, we are going to be doing another month time skip. The next time when we come back um so think about what you want to accomplish during that time and then we'll talk about it but this is the end of the first part the high elven side of renora season two episode six councils of war we'll join you in part two with the wood elven side and what's been going on with cornelius and sterarch we'll see you then bye bye